Growing up, I spent my summers working at a little amusement park that was located near my hometown. And one of the things that we would spend a lot of time talking about, in addition to just some basic training on how to operate the ride and how to deal with people, but we spent a lot of time talking about what to do when things go wrong. We spent hours and hours working with employees on, okay, if this happens in this emergency situation, what's the quickest way to shut the ride down and get people safe to, you know, to, to make sure everybody is safe. We spent a lot of time talking about worst case scenarios, right? And I think that's true in pretty much every organization. It's not a matter of if a crisis is going to happen. It's a matter of when and how do you deal with it, right? So crisis, you know, planning and preparation and, and just you know, engagement during a time of crisis is just a part of any organizational life cycle. And certainly nowhere is that more true than for the public relations folks and media relations people in that, in that organization. So in this video, I want to talk just a little bit about crisis planning in public relations. How do we go about it? What are some tips for making sure we can do that effectively, especially in the modern age, given the different communication tools that we have? So first of all, you ought to have this crisis plan checklist. You ought to have a plan in place. Can't stress how important it is for there to be an enormous amount of preparation to kind of anticipate what's coming, to have an idea of what may happen and, and plan for that then and have a plan in place for, you know, what ifs, what if this happens? What if that happens? They don't want to, you know, what if the moon crashes into the earth? That's a little bit outside the realm of, of what we can plan for and, and should spend our time on. But you know, we ought to take an honest look at, at the industry that we're in and the area that we're in and, and try and anticipate what are some things that could happen and what can we do to be prepared when the, for when they do happen. So the first things first, in any kind of crisis, your leadership needs to be visible. Leadership from you as the public relations person, but also leadership from the organization. Who's the head of that organization, the face of that organization, the, the, the person that people most associate with that organization, they need to be front and center. The leadership needs to be visible, not hidden away somewhere, not protected. They need to be front and center working with the media, working with the publics, working with whatever forces are at work to uh, handle that situation. They've, that leadership uh, role is critical and they must be visible during these times of crisis. As I was kind of touching on before, you need to have these, you need to do a vulnerability analysis. You need to have an idea of what may be coming. <clears throat> if you're in an area that deals with a lot of volatile chemicals, what happens if those chemicals spill? What's our plan for that? And what's our plan not only for dealing with those chemicals, but what's our plan for informing the public and, and managing um, the, the narrative on that end of things? So whatever industry you're in, for us as, at the amusement park, it was what happens if a ride breaks down or if, or if something goes wrong? What's our vulner vulnerability there? And how do we keep people safe? How do we protect people and also protect um, the, the, the longevity and the, 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 uh, the reputation of the park as someplace safe and some say someplace reliable for people to come to? So what are the vulnerabilities that exist in your organization? We ought to be able to identify those and then again, begin to put a plan in place, begin to have those procedures in place for what happens when this happens, what happens when this other thing happens. And when we, after we do these vulnerability analyses, we need to have put these procedures in place for when they do happen, if they, heaven forbid, would happen, right? And we do need to plan for those worst case scenarios, not to be all doom and gloom, but, but uh, bad things happen right? Bad things happen in the world. So we need to plan for okay, what's the worst possible thing that could happen. And let's have a plan in place so that we can deal with that effectively. Not only again, in that moment, in terms of keeping people safe, keeping operations moving forward, but also protecting the reputation of our organization and the, the kind of the credibility of our, of our leadership and our organization. So we need to plan for these worst case scenarios. We need to have a plan in place after we've done these vulnerability analyses. Now, one unique aspect of sort of uh, modern times is this idea of social media. So how does social media impact things in a crisis? I want to take a look at, a, at kind of a, a pros and cons list here of social media in a crisis just real quickly. First of all, the positives with social media are that the, it's a direct connection between you and the public. So it gives you immediate and direct access to um, the publics and, and the media uh, that you have. So um, that you want to communicate that message to directly or not dependent on a third party or anything. So <clears throat> you can be direct in communicating with me. It is, as I mentioned, also immediate. Uh, you don't have to, there's no lag between the time that you can get information out. You can immediately be connecting with 
with people and you can expect it to spread rapidly. You can expect that, expect that message to spread rapidly and be shared amongst people in a viral sense, right? Hopefully not literally, but in a viral sense over social media, it can be spread rapidly. And so th those are some of the positive things we can direct, we can connect directly with our publics. We can do so immediately and we can expect that message to be spread fairly quickly. On the downside, the, the negatives are that sometimes in social media, things can get lost in the noise, right? There's a lot happening on social media. And so sometimes our message could just be one of billions at any given time. And so hopefully it won't get lost in the noise, but that is a danger. That's an, a downside of social media is that there's just so much of it. It's hard for people to really keep track sometimes. Uh, also the sense of permanence. There's an idea that, that what we put out there is out there forever for better or for worse. What you put on social media is going to be out there forever. Just assume somebody's going to take a, a screenshot of it. And even if you delete that message, it's still going to be out there at some point. So um, there's a permanence there. So we ought to be very, very careful about what we put out there because it, there is that sense of permanence. And then of course you're going to have trolls on social media, right? No matter what's happening, no matter how good your reaction is or how good your intentions are or whatever, how good your message is, you're going to have people that are just going to troll it, right? They're just going to be negative all over, going to try and uh, bring you down, call you names, all that kind of stuff. So you just, if you're going to be engaged in social media, you just have to ex anticipate that, expect it, and, and kind of roll with it then. Okay, so in addition to those kind of positives and negatives about social media. We can keep these principles in mind when we're using social media in a crisis situation. There's some things we need to bear in mind. First of all, we should use social media to provide real time updates. We got to take advantage of that immediacy and, and really provide real time updates, give people a reason to tune into our social media to, to really be focused on that and use it in a positive way to give the most up to date, accurate information that we can uh, using those outlets. We ought to put the, the word out quickly and widely, right? We put the word out quickly and widely. And uh, so uh, we can use it to, to spread our message as we talked about in, in, in an immediate sense, but also in a rapid sense. And so we ought to take advantage of that too, that it's going to hopefully spread virally and get out quickly so we can, we can share information quickly. We have to use one voice when we're thinking about social media in a crisis. We can't have different departments posting and, and sharing different information and taking different approaches. We have to, as an organization, speak with one voice. So there ought to be one specific focused um, you know, outlet for these things, especially in a crisis. That's probably true in general, but particularly in a crisis, we have to have one voice as an organization. We also do want to consider those media needs. We ought to post information in a way that, you know, we have this media center or whatever that the, the media can get to information quickly and can, can be housed there. We ought to think about their deadlines. We ought to think about the fact that they, they might want it, you know, give them a, a tip or a heads up that, you know, we're getting ready to post some information. And so they can have those people ready and, and not be caught off guards. We ought to keep the, if we want the, the partnership of the media, we need to keep their needs in mind as well. And it's sort of along the same lines. We ought to keep our employees in the loop. They should not be learning about this information on social media themselves. We ought to be focused on sharing that information with our employees as we have it so that they are also in the loop. They can also be really good purveyors of information as well as, as uh, just keeping them informed. They can be really helpful in, in, in getting that information out there as well. And then finally, we need to be accessible in these types of situations. It's really critical that, that, that the public relations people in general, and also the leadership of the organization be accessible, be open, be transparent, be available for uh, discussions and, and uh, to hear concerns and all kinds of things like that. So as you can see, there's a, there's a real process to crisis planning, crisis management, using public relations. We've just barely touched on some of the highlights here, but you know, we have to have this cycle in mind. We need to be prepared in advance before anything ever happens. Then we have the actual response, then we have the recovery, and then we do what we can to keep those things from happening again through mitigation and prevention. But then when it does, when things happen, we want to be prepared for that again. It's this constant cycle and it ought to be on our mind in terms of public relations at all times. How are we going to handle this? How are we going to anticipate these things? And what are we going to do when they do happen? If you have questions about crisis planning in, in public relations or anything else related to the field, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope this has been helpful in giving you a sense of what are some of the highlights and guidelines that we need to keep in mind for crisis management and crisis planning in the field of public relations.